Hi everyone, and welcome to Group 11's video demonstration on the comparison of laminar and turbulent convective mass transfer. Today we will be looking at water and corn syrup, and how food colorant is convectively transferred through these fluids, and how we can even turn back time and convective mass transfer through laminar flow. First off, let's explain the concepts we will be exploring. The first is viscosity. Viscosity can be described as how thick or how sticky a fluid is. It is resistance to motion due to internal friction as layers of a fluid move past each other. Remember, a liquid is any fluid that deforms under shear stress. Let's take a look at our fluids. Water. Water has a low viscosity, and it flows free of much internal resistance. In turn, corn syrup, as a highly viscous liquid, has much more internal resistance to flow. The next concept is laminar and turbulent flow. Turbulent flow is when a fluid flows and the movement of the layers of the fluid is irregular so that they mix with each other and can form eddies in vortices. Laminar flow, the other type of flow, is when a fluid flows with the layers moving at a constant velocity and thus there is a one-dimensional straight flow. Now how do these two relate? That is through the Reynolds number, which is the ratio of inertial forces to viscous forces for fluid flow. The Reynolds number also determines which type of flow the fluid will be in. A low Reynolds number means that viscous forces will dominate, and then this corresponds to laminar flow. A high Reynolds number means that inertial forces dominate, and this corresponds to turbulent flow. By looking at the Reynolds number equation, and knowing that corn syrup has a high viscosity, you can see that viscous forces will dominate, and the flow in corn syrup will most likely be laminar. Now, how do these types of flow relate to convective mass transfer? Convective mass transfer is the movement of particles into or out of a moving fluid. In our experiment, we will be adding liquid dye to corn syrup and water to compare convective mass transfer of the dye in laminar and turbulent flow. It is represented by the flux equation shown here. For our experiment, we will consider a concentration C1 and C2 constant for both liquids, so the variable of interest is our K, or convective mass transfer coefficient. In general, laminar flow correlates to a low K value, where turbulent flow relates to a high K value. So now that we have the technical stuff covered, what exactly is our experiment? Let's go over what we need first. We need water, corn syrup, our concentric cylinders which we use to induce velocity within the fluid, our food dye and its container, pipettes to add the dye to the fluid, a record player to induce rotational motion, paper towels because we will be dealing with highly viscous and very sticky corn syrup, and decorative pillows because why not? First, we'll fill our beaker with either corn syrup or water. Then we will place the beaker on the record player where it can rotate. We will then insert a stationary cylinder inside the fluid. We will inject the dye using a pipette, and then we will rotate the record player, and thus the outside concentric cylinder, in order to induce laminar or turbulent flow. After this rotation, we will then reverse the flow at the same speed to the point of origin. This will show us how the dye has convectively transferred throughout the fluid. We will then repeat this procedure with the other fluid. Let's take a look at this firsthand. We add the dye to the water mixture and spin the record player to induce rotational motion. As you can see, the dye in the water mixes in at all depths of the water, causing a purple tint throughout the mixture. When we complete a few rotations, we then reverse. When we return to the point of origin, the flow has proven to be completely turbulent. As the purple tint remains throughout, showing that the convective mass transfer of the dye is very large in water. Now let's try it with corn syrup. This time you can see the dye spread in a laminar fashion. The flow of the dye is straight, and when we reverse the flow, we can nearly recover the original formation of the injected dye. Nearly all of the corn syrup remains in its original color, as convective mass transfer is low. Now why does this matter? In our demonstration, we could see which type of flow effectively promoted convective mass transfer, and that was turbulent flow. We cause this by inducing rotational motion. This is similar in reactors which use rotational motion from internal agitators to induce turbulent flow of mixtures and promote convective mass transfer. This is where chemical engineers can contribute to the real world. These reactors are important to creating products such as beverages, the colorant we used, and some polymers which are used in many different items. These products are made every day in large quantities in industry. So it is very important that mass is convectively transferred within these reactors so reactions can occur efficiently. A chemical engineer uses the concepts we outlined today to predict how the materials will behave in industry and these reactors to design the most efficient production methods. 
With that said, thank you guys for listening, and I hope you enjoy.